Hi, this is Prashant Jinde. Welcome you all in the third semester DTM. In this semester, you are about to learn seven different subjects. These subjects are called as courses in I scheme. Amongst these courses, I will be engaging you with a course named as Element of Weight Processing. In your screen, you will be able to see with the red box that highlights the course details like abbreviation of this course, marks for theory and practicals, etc. These courses carries total 100 marks. So total 100 marks is distributed into a theory and practical sections. The theory marks further distributed into ESE and PA. So ESE carries 70 marks, ESE means end semester, ex semester examination and PA means progressive assessment which has a weightage of 30 marks. The PA is a combination of marks of PST 1, 2 and micro projects. Here practicals also carries a weightage of about 50 marks which is further divided into a 25 marks internal examination and 25 marks which is allotted for journals. The next an important part is knowing your syllabus and their content. This course syllabus can be downloaded from DKD Textiles official website and its link is provided on your screen. When you go to this link to download third semester syllabus, one should click on the semester third present under the I scheme textile manufacturing program. This is the screenshot of a website. The red circle mark is highlighting where you need to click to download the syllabus. Once downloaded, you will find it is in the PDF file. And opening the PDF file, just scroll down to the name element of wet processing. Under this element of wet processing syllabus, you can find the different information. For your reference, this is the screenshot of a syllabus. Although this is not a complete syllabus, but a part of it. You can download the whole syllabus and go through the details of each part, like COs, that is course outcome, what will be able to understand after completion of this course. This is denoted by the CO. There are six different COs are present. And these six different COs are linked with each unit in the syllabus. Hence, syllabus is having total six units. Syllabus also covers the suggested micro projects. Definitely, I'm going to give you the details of micro projects later on. But for now, you will get an idea what could be the micro project title may look like. Topic wise, marks distribution. You can find this in your syllabus. As I earlier told you, in this course, you will learn a total six different units. The name of those are in front of your screen. Each unit has a certain teaching hours allotted. So total hours required to complete the whole syllabus, that is six units, we need 64 hours. Similarly to the teaching hours, Individual unit carries a certain marks based on their importance or weightage. Total 60 to 70 marks distributed amongst the six units. You can find the last column, the marks allotted for each unit. Each unit has a certain topics and subtopics as you see here in the last column. Unit 1 has actually seven topics and several subtopics like gray inspection process, shearing and cropping process, sinzing process and gassing process, desizing process, scouring process, bleaching process, moisturization. So these are called as topics. Whereas subtopics are object of gray inspection process, then uh, two or four cuttings, cutting systems, 
then you can say acid desizing, enzymatic desizing, batch wise desizing, continuous desizing, vertical pressure gear and J box, sodium hypochloride and hy uh, hydrogen peroxide bleaching, then moisturization, the factor affecting the moisturization, etc. These are the subtopics. Once you completely understand the topic and subtopics, you will be answer the UOs. UOs means unit outcome. Uh, in this syllabus, the middle column denotes the UOs. There are basically four UOs. UOs there are in the form of questions, and you can able to answer those questions once you completely understand the topic and subtopic of unit 1. So today we are about to learn about to start unit 1. So let's start with the topic first named as basics of pretreatment process and subtopic weight process flow. You can able to see on your screen there is a picture and that picture is of loom. This weaving machine or loom produces a woven fabric. Now this woven fabric, if we go and stitch as it is, cut and stitch and convert them into a garment and worn as it is, what will happen? This is not actual process flow of making a garment from a weaving machine. So basically the fabric which is coming out of weaving machine is known as a grey fabric and uh, the process sequence you are going to see on your screen is not a particular process sequence that we generally use in the industry but rather this process sequence has certain disadvantages. So generally this process sequence is not used in the industry. So which kind of a process sequence is used in the industry? So in between the weaving machine and in between the sieving machine there are a lot of processes that we call it as a wet processes. So these wet processes is a very important part and what is this necessary that I'm going to show you later on but let's understand what are the different wet processing treatments are given to the fabric so once a fabric is coming out from the weaving machine it is uh, going to go into a wet processing house cells, where the first treatment is received by the gray fabric is gray inspection the gray inspection process is nothing but grading uh, visualizing the defects and allotting a number to the particular defects and grade the fabric accordingly. Once grading inspection is there, after that the next process is sinzing, then desizing, scouring, bleaching, moisturization, dyeing, printing and finishing. These are the nine different stages or you can say pre-treatments need to provide to a woven fabric that is a grey fabric and then and then only we can convert this grey fabric into a stitchable garment or stitchable fabric. So let's talk about the necessity of wet processing treatment. Why these all those nine pre-treatments or treatments are required before going into the stitching. Starting with necessity let's understand that in this fashion that gray fabric which is coming out of the loom has a lot of impurities into it what kind of impurities that woven fabric possesses is nothing but starches oils where these starch and oils is coming from we actually add those impurities during the sizing process right some color tint, some organic, some inorganic matter, those are the impurities present into the gray fabric, the fabric which is coming out of the weaving loom. So, this gray fabric, if we use without uh, wet processing, we cut it, stitch it, and make it garment and worn as it is, 
then fabric feels like stiffer it will not be a flexible fabric feels like a rougher it will not be a softer one and that fabric won't absorb any liquid so we generally sweats right so sweat has to be absorbed by the fabric so if you wore a fabric which doesn't absorb it feels you uncomfortable so this uncomfortable feeling is because of impurities present in the fabric so these impurities need to remove step by step in the wet processing treatments so after wet processing a fabric become more smoother more flexible right and it feels like a soft it can absorb a liquid so all those all those good properties need to be imparted and those good properties is only been imparted after a wet processing hence wet processing is must and necessary so let's talk about each wet processing in details starting with starting with a gray fabric inspection so this is a very important and crucial step the woven fabric which is coming out of the weaving machine is transported to the wet processing houses the wet processing houses has these nine treatments and pre treatment processes but it starts with a gray inspection here this here you can see in this department gray inspection department you will see this machine and this machine is equipped with a lighting source and a person in front of uh, that lighting source lighting source and a fabric so this person is constantly visualizing the fabric what it visualizes what it actually see in the fabric constantly the defects so there are certain de fabric defects those are present in the fabric during the manufacturing process so these defects based on their severity and number that person allots a number a particular number to that defects so that person is constantly visually inspect the fabric and allot a particular number based on severity of a defect so at the end of the complete inspection of this fabric he adds the total number of a defects point and based on the number of defect points that he is collected one can grade the fabric whether the fabric is first grade quality second grade quality or chindi's quality so this is nothing but a gray inspection let's talk about the next process is nothing but sinzing right sinzing is certain machine where the fabric is passed through and in that machine fabric is generally uh, literally burned out their hairs now in this figure you can see that the fabric has a certain hairiness right the fibers coming out from the surface of the fabric those are literally burned by using a flame so these flame heats up this hair hairs and these hairs are literally burned out so fabric surface become more smoother so sinzing process removes the hairiness so this is a second process after the gray inspection in the nine process of wet processing treatments